And we're back. Game number two of our first best of three of the day. Just about to get underway live from South by Southwest here in beautiful Austin, Texas. I'm your host, AC, joined by my co-caster, Fogged. And tell you what, man, you know, E-Hug showed us some creative stuff in game one. It was really yeah, fun to watch. I liked the way, I really liked what they were thinking with the Wraith King. Basically just saying, oh, you know, you're, you're going to kill him. You're going to focus fire him. Yeah, do that three times. Maybe four, depending on the situation. And it, uh, it, it became very difficult. However, Liquid, you know, even though they were having some PC issues. They were able to just reset, and what they ended up doing was just choking them out under their own Tier 3s. There was definitely a moment when it felt like E-Hug could have swung that and taken control, and there was a moment when they were grouped as 5, and Liquid was running. They were on the run, tail between their legs, trying to keep Tier 2s up, but after just gaining map control back, MSS on that Nature's Profit really began to kick in. The split push began to kick in. And uh, by the time all was said and done, they just managed to kite around that Wraith King beautifully. Uh, Weaver did not get into the position he really wanted to be for the late game. He wasn't as far ahead. And uh, Liquid made it look easy by the end, but I really don't think that was indicative of how close that match was at times. Yeah, absolutely. Liquid did have the lead in the gold and the XP for the... Actually, I think for the majority of the game. So... It kind of like disagrees with you with that, but it definitely was a close game just based off the way E-Hug was playing, and Liquid wasn't really finding the picks that they could have gotten that they yeah. thought they with the Bat Rider and with the Furon and with the Infest Bomb. So, and now jumping right into this game, we see a Liquid does not want to play versus a Doom, nor an Ember Spirit, because Five after Sing Sing's three. Ember Spirit yesterday, they definitely don't want to see that here. They banned out the Slark and the Clockwork as well, and they decide to pick up themselves this first pick, Ancient Apparition, which was banned out last game, and then a Nyx just to help them gank. Yeah, the Ancient Apparition, you know, we've talked extensively about that hero. Really like the way an AA and a Nyx Assassin work together in conjunction with each other. Being able to land an Ice Blast and finish it up with a Vendetta and a Mana Burn uh, makes it uh, very, very easy to burst down a single target, especially early on in the game. E-Hug, though, keeping things pretty wide open. They've got the Visage and the Weaver pick coming out again, even though, again, Weaver, uh, their Weaver in Game 1 was not really in as good a shape as he could have been. Didn't have the best game possible. But if there's one thing for E-Hug that I think has surprised us both, it has been the relative lack of impact the Riaboros has had in most of their games. I mean, he is an excellent mid. We've seen him play well. We know he's a great player. But for one reason or another, be it the fact that Liquid or the other teams they played against are beginning to learn how to hold him down, or maybe just having, you know, a bad stretch of days. Sometimes even the best of players are on the downslope. They still need a lot more out of him than he's been able to give them so far. Yeah, definitely. We see Ehug just, they don't want to play versus this Bulba Invoker either. Oh, nice. We see a Jakiro picked up for the first time in this tournament. So that'll be, that'll be nice. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of people discussing like how you really want to build this hero since Dual Breath got that huge change. It's no longer a burst spell at all. And we've seen a lot of people pick up the Liquid Fire and leveling it up quickly because it does really bring down towers extremely quickly and it's an amazing tool for harassment in the offlane if you want to harass somebody out of the offlane. And something else Ehug does that's very smart, they did pick up this Weaver and this Visage right away. And then in the second set of bands, they ban out the Storm Spirit because they know they're going to be lacking a bit of Disable. And they definitely don't want to be playing versus TC's Lifestealer again because he really did, Five even though he didn't have like the hardest impact in the game, he did get very farmed and he was hitting quite strong. Oh yeah, perfect example of doing his job. You know, he didn't have to be an outstanding player or make outstanding plays in that game. Just do your job, farm, farm up and be what you need him to be in the late game. And TC's excellent at that, one of the best in the business. He loves his farming heroes, but you know, you got your Jakiro, I get my Shadow Shaman. Love seeing the Shadow Shaman pick up, in particular against the Weaver. Has uh, two great spells for lockdown. He, he by himself can just about lock down a Weaver so long as he has follow-up damage. You put that in conjunction with the Ice Blast from the Ancient Apparition. Nyx Assassin, of course, with the burst that comes with Vendetta. That Weaver, even in the late game, even after a Lincoln's, if the Shadow Shaman has played well in conjunction with these other uh, heroes they picked up so far, he should never really feel all that safe unless he gets an early Ten BKB. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the way that Liquid usually tends to draft like this. They always have a set of lockdown. They never really have just a bunch of slows and everything. They always have these set disablers and these nice nukers. And right here, they do have a massive amount of nuke, and they do also have a massive amount of disable. Oh yeah, Ether Shock, one of those abilities that can kind of sneak up on you. You know, yeah, you get absolutely. a couple of points into it early, it can nuke down support. So when you look across the board, I mean, Visage, you know, he's been he's been nerfed a little bit and that doesn't feel quite as tanky. Jakiro does have excellent strength game for a support though, so um, he can feel a little bit tanky. But one thing that stands out immediately from E-Hug, and we'll see if they're going to shore this up Five with their last pick, but remain. they, I mean, you've got Jakiro, Ice Path, excellent control, Bad Rider, of course. They've got a lot of exactly. slow overtime DPS, to put it, to put it mildly. They've got... Um, the Macro Pyre, they've got Ice Path, they've got um, 
Uh, Visage, of course, to help them out a little bit with the burst, but Weaver is carrying a lot of the weight in terms of just being able to focus fire down targets. Whereas Liquid, as you mentioned, has a lot of lockdown. They also have a fair amount of AoE. And now Luna with the Glaives as she begins to level her way up Radiant later. Not only she, will she be hitting hard on primary targets, but secondary targets. They've just got a nice mix of damage across the board right now at all phases of the game. Yeah, absolutely. And Liquid does ha have a good amount of push now. They do have the yeah. Rasta Wards, plus, of course, the Luna Aura, which helps them get a bunch of towers in the beginning of the game if they can. And E-Hog is really lacking that tower push, I didn't want to say. They do have the Visage Familiars and the Liquid Fire, like I said before. But Five overall, they don't really have the most tower push, and they really need to get another hero that is a type of semi-carry or hard Reserve carry. Time. Because if they end up going into a late game with this lineup, it's going to be really tough for them because Luna ends up being an extremely powerful late game carry, especially with the conjunction of the Nyx Assassin stuns, plus all the disables from the Shadow Summon and the Ice Blast coming out of the Ancient Apparition. Yeah, and she also also has an, a really, really well-ranged ability to pop uh, the Weaver's Lincoln Sphere as well with the Absolutely. Lucid Beam. So, um, you know, they just have so many ways to, to help cope with him and deal with him. And I'm a little worried for E-Hug. I'm not going to say it's an outdraft because, of course, it all comes down to execution. Maybe they have a very specific game plan Ten in mind right now. Remaining. But in terms of just a well-rounded team, a robust kind of a lineup, I feel like Liquid has something that can do it all. And Luna Dude, can start showing up to fights to very, very early, um, depending on her build. You know, if she rushes a BKB, um, she's not going to be all that worried about an early game Weaver, especially if he goes with a defensive build like an early BKB of his own. And then other than that, you've got Batrider to lasso. You've got magic damage from Jakiro. You have magic damage from Visage. Ten How do they bring her down when she has so much lockdown on her side, when they have a lot of, uh, of burst potential Radiant coming out in magic as well as physical. I just feel like Liquid has the much easier to execute lineup and a lineup that they could just kind of fall back on. Even if they do fall behind, it's going to be on E-Hug. They're really going to be under the gun for the majority of the game to execute and put a lot of pressure on TL. Yeah, Batrider is an amazing ganking hero. We've, always, we've said this a million times, especially when it's this blink dagger and you have to be very careful. But Liquid overall has a better ganking lineup right now. They can yeah. really get some pick-offs with this Nyx, with this AA, even seconds. with the Shadow Summon if he wants to incorporate that. They still have another last pick as well. And we do see Liquid actually go for the Five banning out of the Death Prophet. Remaining. So that would have made up for E-Hug. And yeah, they decide to go for a Dragonite and Ryoboros. So they do have this dual-core strong lineup for mid-game. But still, if this game gets a little... <laughs> oh, wow. And we get an Axe pick. And this is just amazing. I love seeing this hero played. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to tell you, the last time I saw an Axe picked up, it was actually played by Ake from Alliance, and he had, uh, yeah, he had a field day with it. Basically what you can do if you want to jungle the axe, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case, is it is going to be Bulba, um, who traditionally plays a solo lane for Team Liquid in the absence of uh, Koikva, usually he's going to wind up mid. But when you're talking about the power of Battle Hunger in conjunction with uh, any other damage over time, not that they have a lot outside of Ancient Apparition's Ice Blast, but the important thing about that is just how miserable it is to lane against him, no matter the situation. He puts a yeah, ton absolutely. of pressure on through nothing but Battle Hunger burn, and you basically can't keep your health up, and you're susceptible to ganks into aggression the entire battle. laning phase. Yeah, absolutely. And, and him versus a melee hero, especially in the mid lane, is pretty disastrous for the melee hero. Even though DK can always do his own thing, he gets his bottle and he just starts flame breath and the creeps and bottle crowing. But he does, Axe does put a lot of pressure. We've seen these people pick even Axe versus TA, I know, in the past, and the TA gets completely destroyed because, of course, Battle Hunger removes those charges. And wow, we're actually seeing this Weaver being played by Ryu Boris in middle. So yeah, they don't want to be putting this melee hero versus yep. this axe middle. And they're just going to decide to farm up on the DK on Jiggle Billy. Now this is one of those things. DK, as good as a hero is, I mean, he certainly can be played as a pure out and out one position. But the reason you don't see that all that often is kind of the same concept as why you don't see a Shadow Fiend get tri all that much. He just benefits so much from levels early on and does have the ability to flash farm late. He's excellent in terms of push, so you can so expect it if they to want to, begin to really pressure down uh, this bottom tier one um, if things start to look a little bit sketchy on the rest of the map and they just want to break down the laning phase. But, you know, this is going to be... This is going to be interesting. I, I really do like a mid Weaver. I feel like he is uh, a little underutilized in that role a lot. Usually, though, um, there's just so many other heroes you can put there, and Weaver excels so much in off lane situations, aggressive situations, even dual lane 2 1 2 uh, uh, setups that really you don't have to do this. But it is an interesting games. switch, and you know, the way this is going to match up with Bulba taking our axe mid, this is probably where the majority is going to be. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see MSS actually got his ward down very early up down in this bottom lane, so he is going to have side vision of these supports, and if they're pulling, so he's going to be able to call the missing calls, just so Bulba doesn't really have to worry too much about being ganked by these guys. And he also has a sentry on him, so if they do decide to lane ward, which they actually aren't, he's going to be able to find that. 
Now, Cakes is going to have to be very, very careful in this, uh, as this offlane bad rider. Yes, you have Firefly, but there's so much, uh, so much lockdown. Once Way 2 hits level 2 and he has a point in a Hex and a point in a Shackles, combine that with an early point in a Cold Feet, certainly Chilling Touch will be the first for Fluff. But even Firefly is not going to reliably get you out of trouble if you happen to get caught out with a Hex. So um, he's going to have to play very, very careful. and might end up just abandoning this lane uh, once he gets a level or two and going straight to the jungle so he can try to rush something out at bottom. We can see MSS taking a little bit of harass here from Ehog, but trading in a on Pantego a little bit as well, so playing quite bravely. Yeah, and he's got the Stout Shield plus this amazing base regen that Nyx does have. But Pantego is just hitting him with those Liquid Fires constantly and putting a good amount of harassment on him. But MSS doesn't really have to worry about any kill potential on him right now because he knows that this Jakiro has Liquid Fire. Yep. And we can see him mid. A lot of trading in the paint between Bulma and Rhea Boros already. And, uh, yeah, I mean, all we can do is watch it develop. But um, uh, how do you feel about this? I mean, just give me some first impressions. Mid-Axe. I think that this Weaver is going to actually benefit from this a lot. Because, yeah, Axe does decent versus all like these small range heroes. And Bulba actually decides to pick up a Berserker call level really early. So he wants to just try to... He doesn't want to get killed by anything risky. He doesn't want to be throwing battle hungers. And he knows that Weaver has a really easy time just last hitting creeps. So we see Batrider actually forced to pop his Firefly very, very early. And it looks like he's just going straight toward this jungle right away. Because he's, yep. he's not getting anything up there the way Liquid's playing it. Oh, yeah. And again, that just comes down in a lot of ways to Shadow Shaman and... Ancient Apparition. We saw that second point go into Cold Feet just now. Shadow Shaman actually put a point into Aether Shock, skipped the second uh, lockdown. Didn't uh, care that much about Hex, but yeah, just the strength of Shackles plus Cold Feet on the Bad Rider, even though you have Firefly still a little too chancy for him and just going to make his way into the jungle. And, you know, this is one of the ways that Bat did get nerfed. He's not quite as good in the jungle as he once was. Um, usually you want to try to get him level one or two. Um, or uh, uh, one or two levels, I should say, before you send him in there. But he'll be able to catch up. It's just going to be a little slower than he would like. Yeah, and Bobo's getting pressured a lot. He has some decent CS, but Weaver is coming out very beneficial of this. And Rivals should have seen Way 2 actually pick up that DD because they do have him uh, ward up on that top room. So he should be playing a little bit more careful. I uh, just heard a dragon tail on the MSS, but no follow-up jiggle. He was just doing it for a CS. He didn't want to get it denied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why not? Yeah, well, I mean, why not? You, he might as well use some mana while he starts getting some regen up. Yeah. But everything looks to be quite calm. We can see this kind of reminds me of a pre-TI2 kind of a look, um, just in terms of the way it's playing out. Just very, very passive on both sides, having the majority of the heroes concentrated on one quarter of the map. Pandago is taking a little bit of harassment from MSS. And yeah, he's actually got him down, spins the Impale, and he doesn't have a point in the Man of Burn, but he does have Carapace used it and finally gets some help coming over from Iron Sheep. And MSS is playing so aggressive. He's right there on top of him. The dual fire spin. Can he get it? Yes, he does. Still not enough to kill off the Jakiro. So MSS playing ultra aggressive and really paying the price for it. Yeah, and that's, that's really risky. He was playing definitely a little bit too aggressive. I think he could have just ran left and he would have ended up surviving. But that's actually kind of devastating because now he gave this Dragon Knight first blood and he's going to rush out this Midas first year. And yeah, we see the recipe already up on the career. Yeah, and that, you know... I, I understand trying to make a big play, but as soon as he saw the Visage, he should have just bailed. Like, what was he doing? Yeah, and he's also, he's not really the highest level. He's only level two right now. On yep. this. Oh, and we see some action in mid. Maybe Bulba might be able to go down if Ryu decides to chase, but no, he doesn't. He's just going to play it safe. Not really, he doesn't really need to do anything because he knows he's definitely winning that CS war. Yep. Shikuchi was on cooldown. If it hadn't have been, or if it hadn't, uh, yeah, if he had had it available, very good chance he would have tried to dive that out, but... Instead, opting to just go back in CS. And speaking of CS, he's in good shape. He's sitting at 18, the two carries, TC. And Jigglebilly sitting at 26 Dyer's and 20. Oh, Bulba. Bulba, you are so lucky. Oh, is it? Runs toward bottom room, picks up a regen. Regeneration. <laughs> Already got up his tranks as well, so. Certainly has, uh, would have had enough region even without it, but yeah. certainly bolstered. DK yeah, does decide to get a Midas, though. It's very early, too. It's only four minutes in the game. That's an extremely fast Midas. And Luna actually decided to go for the treads. Oh, and they're getting a kill on Cakes up on top here. Yep. This is why we knew Cakes was going to struggle. And we saw it right there. I mean, Fluff spit the cold feet, and uh, they had the shackles as well. Just so much lockdown. And two points in the Aether Shock. He didn't even spend it there. He actually had a lot of damage he didn't even have to use. So what's going to end up happening here is Ehug's probably going to want to try to bring this down. But again, when you're tri laning like this and you've had these heroes rotating in and out, just now Jiggle Billy's finding six. And they really are going to have a hard time pushing until uh, the DK and the Visage find their level six. I'm a sheep, obviously, quite a ways away. But Jiggle should be there soon. Yeah, but this, this Dragon Knight pick was actually very, very good by Ehug. And then the way they decided to lane it was actually genius. They decided to just put this Weaver mid versus this Vax, which is really benefiting him. And also, they're giving a lot of solo experience to this Dragon Knight. And he got his Midas so early. So he's going to hit six. And if, if he hits six relatively soon, they're going to take this tower down with ease. 
If they decide to just do a single pull, get a double creep wave up, that's a tower dead instantly with a Dragonite form, because they don't really have that much to react to that. Yeah, they can bring down a Rasta, and he can come and Aether Shock the wave, but he does not have a TP on him just yet, yep. and he, I don't know if he really wants to just rotate just right now. They actually have nobody in the mid lane right now on Liquid. Speaking of single pull, looks like that might actually be the case here. No, Pandago's going to go ahead and grab the Alpha Wolf and pull it into the... The camp here, well timed as one would expect from Radiance a top professional tower player. Is under Still not going to make that big a difference. May as well be a single pull. So. Yeah, it basically was. There was only a single Alpha Wolf there. So, yep. and we see Sheep actually going toward the Ancients. Is he, is he going to stack up the Ancients right now? It looks like he is. Yep. But big push about to come. The tier one top took a little bit of damage after that dive onto the Bad Rider, but. Still not in that bad of shape. I'm a sheep is beginning to roam a little bit more. We see the bad rider has made his way full time into the jungle, just level four, so he's struggling quite a bit. Has 800 gold up towards his blink dagger plus set of brown boots. So he's got a couple stacks though, so you know yeah. what? it's not too bad for him. And we do see Liquid now making a smoke toward this bottom lane. They want to make some action happen on this Dragon Knight before they can put any pressure on it. Yeah. MSS is getting a good amount of levels under this tower right now, and yeah, Dragon Knight's being spent. Dragon form is being spent, and now this is going to be perfect timing for Liquid to do this. Oh yeah, they have so much lockdown coming out between these heroes as well. Here comes. Way too. Two points in Ether Shock. TP's going to be coming in. They're going to go right after Jiggle Billy. There's the chilling touch used. Jiggle eating a lot of damage. Will drop for free. Can they get fluff? Nope. Pandago now could be in some trouble. Here comes Rhea Boris to try to re engage. Throws out the swarm. However, oh, Bulba went for the dunk, but missed on the Quelling Blade. Now MSS using his Carapace. Cake's response comes out to try to help as best he can, but with no lasso. Can only do a little bit of damage. Rhea Boros, though, will not be able to clean it up. Ooh, barely able to make it back away as well. And Bulba's still just hanging around in the middle of the lane. He's getting kited a lot right now. Yeah. So it's a very strange build coming out of this axe, too. We do see MSS porting right back down, and the courier actually gets Radiant's taken out by last hit oh. by the Ancient Apparition. Great play there by Fluff. Absolutely, and Bulba's not done. Actually manages to drop the hammer and secure a kill before he's picked off by the Visage. Way too there. Moving fairly quickly, but he's going to get the shackles on I'm a sheep. Do they have the follow-up? MSS doesn't have enough mana for an imp. They're going to chase Rhea Boris into the jungle or into the trees and manage to find him. Pandago come loops around, and one more auto attack will bring him down as well. So not the same pace we saw in game one. A lot of kills piling up very quickly in this engagement at bottom. Five to four, Liquid leads this game right now. Yeah, and Fluff now on this Ancient Apparition Ray hits six, and TC brings fallen. down this tower all in the meantime. TC did Dyer's not even come down there at all. Attack. Jacob Billy did do a great, great reaction though. Instead of going back down there to just constantly be team fighting, he goes top and just tries to get a couple, a little bit of farm up there in the meantime while all of that's happening. Yep. I didn't see. Did the courier have anything on it? I'm pretty sure it just dropped something off, so it should have been empty. I'm pretty sure it was empty. Yeah, yeah. I think it just dropped something, an item off to somebody. This is going to be a pure scepter rush coming out on plus. Literally brown boots right into point booster. So, and MSS continues to seem to have some issues, and not sure what it is. The uh, the computer was swapped a while ago. And uh, just looks like there con continues to be some kind of a problem. Taking a look at the items across the board. Uh, yeah, we can see TC. We haven't really talked a whole lot about TC because he's just been doing his own thing, man. He is sitting in pretty nice position. The last yeah, hits, 56 for him at 8 minutes in. That's pretty monstrous farm. But the DK is not far off either. He did get the first blood but didn't end up dropping in that bottom engagement. So he has been a little bit stunted in his development. 36 last hits for the Weaver for E-Hug. So off to a bit of a better start than we saw last time. The way they're going to incorporate Bulba and utilize him in the early game, though, I think is going to matter so much because that hero is not going to be as effective later. They need to get yeah, a lot of mileage out of him in the first 20. Yeah, but... He did go for this really strange build that we haven't really seen it that often. He maxed the counter helix and only has one point up in the battle hunger for the slow. So a little bit strange, and he did get two points up in the Berserker's Call as well, which is actually really weird because it doesn't scale the best. So a little bit strange build out of Boba. Cakes is picking up on his farm right now. He's doing a little bit of the stacks that are in the jungle and whatnot that he can. And he's getting pretty close to his blink. It's a little bit slow, and his levels are a little bit lacking. But the blink dagger, either way, is a great item. And once you get it, there's so much pressure that comes out of it. Liquid just really benefiting monstrously out of all this engagement though because way too got his level five there fluff got level six and he's got a point booster already up on this aa so it's going to be a super super fast ax coming out of him and yeah i mean the the, the supports and overall the experience graph is really and, and golden experience graph is really showing it in liquid's favor which is not massive at this point but they did right. get this early tower down well the issue i think is going to be 
how, how much pressure they're able to put on Jiggle Billy. Again, the reason you run, want to run that DK mid most of the time is you're going to be able to see us fairly reliably because of uh, Breathe Fire. The experience is not going to be that big of a problem. If at any time your mid hero, uh, your mid opposition ends up missing, you can pressure the tier ones and drop a tier one very quickly. When you run him in a tri lane like this, though, you take away a lot of the innate advantages he has in a one on one matchup. His CS is fine, but his level gain, not quite as good as he would like it to be. I mean, when, when you look, he's right up there. With, uh, with the tops of the board, TC's actually a little bit lower. I was expecting him to be, uh, to be quite a bit higher, but it yeah. looks like they actually did manage that. Much better down at bottom than I thought they did in terms of making sure he got solo experience as often as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that super early Midas, yeah. that four minute Midas, of course, made Helped, a yeah. huge difference. And TC did not decide to go for the super greedy build. He decided just to go for the treads of Kilo and push down that tower while everybody was busy team fighting down bottom. And TC might end up having to show up to fights a little bit sooner than, uh, than he would otherwise like. I mean, Bulba, again, on this mid-axe, I mean, they're only going to get so much out of him. You know, seeing him drop a Culling Blade is always a lot of fun, but they have to continue to fight this, uh, fight this up, and they have to continue to try to focus down uh, this Dragon Knight. I mean, the Weaver's going to be notoriously tough to track down, and he's in really, really good shape. I mean, you take a look at the, at the net worth. Eh, actually, check that. I mean, again, that's kind of surprising. Based on what we saw early out of those two, the fact that he was giving Bulba such a hard time. His CS is 12 above, but when in, in terms of pure out-and-out -out net worth, just because Bulba rotated and got something accomplished, it looks like uh, Rio Boris just really didn't capitalize that, having that free lane for a while. Yeah, and it Something that's really, really big, though, if once Boba gets this Blink Dagger up on him, they actually have such a strong team fight because they don't really have to rely on this Nyx to be the initiator anymore. They can have Boba just Blink and initiate, follow up with a stun, follow up with an Ice Blast, and that's devastating if they catch a few heroes. And looks like we are back underway, and hopefully that'll be the last pause of the series. Been a series plagued by pauses, but uh, take a look at Jiggle Billy. He does have his ultimate ready to go, and we've got three here. There's going to be an Ice Blast, though, that's going to boom, connect on all three, and that's going to make it tough. I was going to say, look like he might want to pop his Dragon for him and try to pressure this Tier 1 a little bit for some reaction and free the map up, but for now, Liquid able to hold serve quite effectively. Yeah, and Ehug did get this very early DK at level Daya's 6, but right away Liquid reacted attack. perfectly. They knew that they were going to try to push this bottom tower, and four or five people rotated down bottom and just made sure that they could not do that. And AA picking up his 6 is really going to prevent Ehug from really being able to push a lot of these tier 1 towers. They have to play very, very careful now. Absolutely. TC will be rushing that BKB right after the Aquila. We knew very, very likely. And once he gets that up, again, you know, it's <laughs> they, they, they went with the Midas on the Dragonite. I wonder if he's going to end up going defensive or if he's going to end up going pure offensive with a Shadow Blade pickup while we see the Weaver go with a pure defensive build. I think uh, we yeah. might be seeing Liquid just go for a really fast Roshan. Yeah, and they are. As soon as Way2 hits 6, he points right toward middle and he's just going straight for it. Yep. TC is going for this BKB build. They're just going to look to end this game extremely early. Get a BKB up on him and then just barrel down through these towers. Yep. And splitting up the damage fairly well. Chilling Touch from Fluff certainly going to help out a lot with this. And even though you can't trap Roche with the wards <laughs> any longer, they're still very, very effective. There's Cold Feet Frock, and yeah, they're going to get this for free. It doesn't look like Ehug has any idea what's going on. Yeah, definitely not. They're just farming up a little bit in the meantime. But yeah, Liquid's just having a great time right now after this huge, this huge engagement bottom. The supports are benefiting so much from it because they got so many levels in, all these, in this fight. And the supports on Ehug, there's a level 5 Visage and a level, <laughs> a level 5 Jakiro, yeah. Yep. It's bit strange. You see Rio Boris caught with an AA ulti, but in mid, a little bit of trading between TC and Pandago. TC with that new age. He's got 1,300 gold aside, so he's going to be just about uh, two-thirds of the way towards that BKB as we speak. Way to level 7, MSS sitting at level 7 as well, and already has his arc boots up and 600 gold towards a blink or a force staff, depending on what he wants. Yeah, and now Way to picks up his arcane boots too, and I wouldn't be surprised if I see him go back heal. They decide to just farm up for a couple, like 30, 40 seconds, and then go toward and barrel down these towers, because also Axe picks up a blink and a smoke in the meantime, so he's going to go looking for a gank right away and just get a pick up and just get a couple towers off of this afterwards. Ice Path catches TC, no follow-up though, just trying to stop the push, but yeah, TC's BKB Dyer's coming very, very soon. He's got enough in the Mithril Hammer right this second. Is under and up at top, we do see the split push Dyer's from Rio Boris though, doing a little attack. bit of damage, doing what he can. Has 800 gold tucked away, but they're going to need him to start coming to fights early as well. Once TC gets that BKB up, it's going to be essential. They have what little right click Dyer's he has at his disposal focused on him, MSS. Undercover of Vendetta, moving into the Radiant side jungle, unable to find a target. We do see another AA ulti tossed up towards top here. Only going to catch creeps, though. Yeah. 
just trying to prevent anyone from getting any split push going. And Visage actually picks up his sixth bottom lane, and he's getting pretty close to his medallion, so not too bad for the Visage. He actually has his medallion and some sentries on him as well. And we see Axe smoked up in the bottom lane. They do want to, right away, like I said, they want to come down, get a kill, push a tower, maybe potentially two towers, and just get Luna his BKB as early as possible and just end this game. Just Brown boots up on Visage. If he gets dope, could be bad news. Wards go down, and yep, Bulba's going to blink right on him. Grabs him with Call, and yeah, that's going to be an easy kill. Ether Shock helping out quite a bit as well. And unfortunately for Ehug, they really weren't in a position to capitalize elsewhere. No yeah, pushing absolutely. going on, nothing else. So good map management by Liquid. That's going to be a free tier one and a free kill. Yeah, and thankfully though, Kix did finish up his Blink Dagger on this bat rider. He has a smoke up, so he's going to go look for his own pick of his own in the meantime. Riaboros doing what he can here in mid, but like you said, trying to find some way to counter punch somewhere on the map. And uh, Cakes with that smoke. Blink Dagger, just Brown Boots. Did manage to catch himself up okay. In terms of net worth, he is still towards the bottom, but at least he's going to be able to have some effect. TC was hanging out in mid for quite some time. Now it's going to be Fluff coming here to grab some experience. He's going to make a very good target of Cakes. We'll go ahead and lasso him. The damage certainly there with Riaboros and Pandego, so a nice return kill. However, at bottom, way two and MSS continuing to just try and shove this lane in. And Ether Shock plus Impale, all it takes to melt an entire creep wave. So they're going to be able, just as two supports, to keep the creeps on a tower anytime they want. Yeah, that's it's really smart by Liquid. They're just keeping this pressure up on all the lanes of Ehug. So Ehug, yes, they're going to get this mid tower. For maybe, Dyer's maybe not right now. It looks like there's a lot of reactions. Liquid yep. getting. Bulba jumping right on Pandego. Oh, a nice culling blade follow up impale before the ice path. Way two's there to finish things off with the ether shock. Bulba not done yet. Will be caught with a grave chill and unable to pursue behind the tier one. But nope, check that. Ready to blink on top. Gets I'm a sheep. Another good impale and another good dunk from Bulba. And Rhea Boros. Got caught by the Ice Blast. We'll go ahead and time lapse. And Waitsu's taking a fair amount of damage here from the tower. They finally clean that bug off and keep him alive with 13 HP. Yeah, dangerously close. Minus armor and everything from the tower hitting him and the bug just hitting him. And one more hit from that bug and he was dead for sure. He drops his wards and they just want to clean this tower up. Yep, and in the meantime, Bulba taking some harass of Rhea Boris. Uses call. Middle tower MSS there to try and help out. Catches him with the carapace to the stun. And that was actually a really nice play as Rhea Boris could have shikuchied on top of him and probably cleaned him up by the time all was said and done, but using the carapace to stun him out, allowed Bulba to retreat. And yeah, the tier one in the meantime does drop, so Liquid beginning to uh, stretch their legs and flex their muscles a little bit. In fact, they've built a very big lead, coming up on 7,500 gold at just 14 minutes into this game. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really just starting to snowball out of control for, I mean, Ehugs isn't really going to be able to do anything because they cannot get these towers down with the levels and everything that Liquid has. They have the Blink Daggers. If they if e hug clumps up at all and they get blinked and called by this axe, it's going to be so bad for them, e hug honestly. And yeah, they're just getting, Liquid's just getting so much more out of this, and Ehug's just going to start getting really suffocated. Attack. They're really not going to be able to find that much farm. They have to play very careful. And in the meantime, Liquid does not have to worry about much. TC's got his BKB finished up, and they're just going to go for taking all of these towers down and ending the game as fast as possible. Yep, there's the BKB done, as you said. Dyer's Liquid just about doubling up in terms of kills attack. and certainly blowing this game wide open in terms of overall net worth for their Dyer's heroes. They do have DK and Weaver both in fairly good position in terms of overall gold game, but DK actually opting to go for a pure defensive build, and I think that's going to hurt them. He's got an Ogre Club up. I guess he could transition at this point, but a BKB looks, like to, looks to be what he wants the most. But they are just going to be lacking in damage so, so much in terms of, uh, in comparison to Liquid, especially now, like you said, level 11 on TC, so he has level two Eclipse even to rely on in terms of uh, AOE magic damage. I, I, I'm worried for them. I think this, this game could very quickly slip away from them. Yeah, if it, if it already hasn't, they do have a blink already up on this roster as well, so Liquid cool. already has basically all the items they really need for now. I mean, the only thing they're missing is really the AA with an Axe, but he does have a point booster up, and I think he's got Radiant another piece coming out to him as well in a second, so. Attack. Liquid just looking very, very strong this game, just playing really proper Dota, just playing it very smart, not risking anything, just going, you know what, we're doing much better right now, we're much stronger, we don't need to worry about saving our Tier 1 right now, we're going to get a Tier 2, we got a free Roshan before, and now we can just really yeah. take over this game. Yeah, they're going to push Tier 3, I think. If nothing else, to force a reaction, they could just about take this fight, though, if they get a good initiation from Bulba. And Bulba, Dyer's middle tower is hanging around the back. Yeah, they're going to drop the wards and go for this. There's going to be an ice path to try to disjoint things a little bit. Bulba manages to catch Pandago. Following it up, there's MSS with the impale. Ice Blast on the way, connects. Caught two of them, I'm a sheep. Not in the best of shape. Shackles behind that. The Bad Rider completely negated in that fight. That's two down. 
really quickly, and Bulba manages to survive just with a little bit of help. Riaboras jumped on by MSS, hits the Impale. He's right there with him, doesn't have a mana burn to follow it up. Fluff taking a lot of damage from this tower, will be able to track down a kill on the Visage, but ends up dying on his own. So a little bit of over-aggressiveness, perhaps, out of Liquid. They don't end up giving... Wow, they actually, yeah, they made it away. Uh, pretty much as a whole outside of poor Fluff, who got a little bit ahead of himself, but able to pressure the tower, able to get a couple of big kills. Yeah, now TC's going to go for this Dominator build, and he's just going to farm a little bit more before they get their BKB up again and just wait for this next Roshan. Give TC this famous TC Aegis that Liquid loves to do and just yep. really just Double take down damage. the last few towers and just go for this Rax at bottom as fast as possible. Absolutely. And we actually see the Blade Mail's now done on Bulbul as well, so... He's doing a pretty good job of remaining relevant despite not having the best early matchup early on. He actually manages to find Cakes and using the Blade Mail, finished off from way too. But the neutral gets the kill. Oh, did the neutral? Yeah, the neutral actually did get that. The beauty of the Seder Blasts. And Bobo actually might go down here, but this, the spins actually oh. take out the Visage Bird and he lives because of it. Oh, good Helix Procs. Man, that's like, what, the third time this game Bulba's managed to make it away with less than 100 HP? Yeah, that he was blocked in by the Visage Birds. He wouldn't yeah. have been able to walk through, and he gets one spin as it's dropping, and it dies. So that was really lucky by Bulba, actually. 6 to 13. Team Liquid in command of this game. Following that push at bottom, we do see their lead was cut down a bit. However, Riaboros being tracked by MSS. He's going to use Shikuchi. MSS trying to keep an eye on him, and Riaboros with a six cents for things, not liking the way things felt up there. MSS just still looking for someone, but unable to find him, and he actually heads elsewhere, so he is going to be safe down there. Yeah, and Jiggle, I mean, looking at the net worth, Jiggle and Weaver aren't really doing that bad at all. No. And it, they have only two towers down, and they are very dangerously close to the Luna's net worth, and Jiggle does have his BKB up. Weaver is getting kind of close to his BKB. He's got his Ogre Club relatively close to his Mithril Hammer. But the gold lead is pretty substantial for Liquid right now. It's 5,000. They do have a lot of towers down. But this Roshan is going to be spawning soon. And Ehug isn't really in the best position to fight at a Roshan pit. There hasn't even been a Luna ult yet in this entire game. And Cakes is having not really the best game on this Batrider either. He's had one lasso off so far in the mid lane, which was successful. Because in the bottom lane, the Knicks just instantly carapace and they just blew him up. And he was really wasn't even really there. Bulba. With the blade mail pop, was looking to chase someone down, unable to find them though. E Hug in the meantime has pulled back. And TC with the Aegis no longer there. Roche is going to be back up in mere seconds though. Only 10 seconds though he's back up. But it is an early BKB pickup as opposed to grabbing that Lincolns for Rhea Boris. So he's going to have his defensive item up. If E Hug can weather the storm here, I think they're going to be okay overall. Just going with two early BKBs on their two cores makes them a little susceptible if they're initiated upon and are unable to, uh, to follow things up as well as they would like. That, that early Blade Mail pickup on Bulba, though, just so very, very smart. That's going to allow him to do just so much passive damage in these team fights. And now we're going to see Wei Tzu caught out, lasso down in middle, and killed off. That's great. Cakes really needed to get a couple pickoffs now because he, he's had his Blink Dagger for almost like seven minutes or so, and he hasn't really been able to get that many great picks off yet. But yeah, they're not doing so bad. DK is actually quite farm. He's only 300 behind this Luna, surprisingly. Yep. And he does have a small Ancient stack. Very small Ancient stack. It actually was bigger, but they cleared it once, I do believe. Mm -hmm. So 20 minutes in, E-Hug, despite falling behind early in this game, beginning to make up some ground. And they're actually getting that graph heading a little bit more in their favor. It was nearly 7,500 gold advantage for Team Liquid at one point. Now cut down to below 5,000. The experience has actually been close, fairly close all game, but even that is beginning to move in the right direction. So Liquid might be uh, letting their moment pass a little bit here. Don't think we're going to see them continue to play this passively for much longer. Yeah, for sure. Fluff is getting very close to his eggs as well, so I, I think we're going to see them start. Yeah, they're going to go toward this Roshan pit right away. They're going to just try to secure this Roche, get that Aegis on TC, and then just go for either this probably just take out the last two towers, not really go for the risk of going high ground into a base again, because they didn't, they didn't really get the most out of that. They had one or two, they got a couple kills, but they did end up losing Fluff, and they lost a bit of their momentum off of that. Roshan the target right now. That's a big old chicken as they continue to go to work right now. E-Hug elsewhere, moving through the jungle, and either don't know what's happening or do know and feel like they can't challenge it, feel like Cakes would like to take a run at it if he could. I think they have an idea of it now. They look yeah. like they're starting to move some familiars toward their impendigos. Yep. And oh, invis. way too. Catches cakes. Actually dropped the wards right in the river there, and that's a little bit of a misfit. Here we go. BKB's up on both sides. Bulba and TC leading the charge. Rhea Boris managing to uh, make it away safely. Bulba will make it's it away fun. once again. The guy just has felt unkillable. Rhea Boros, though. 
not in the same boat, and I'm a sheep next on the list as that's a double kill for Fluff. And yeah, that's not what you want if you're Eho, because now that's a free Roshan. And this is what I was talking about in terms of picking up these early BKBs. They kept them alive there, that's fine. But when it comes to Liquid just being more well-rounded, I feel like E-Hug needed to build more damage early. Yeah, absolutely. And this Shadow Shaman having this Blink Dagger so early, so early is really just really impactful because he can just blink and hex somebody before they get that B can be up, yeah. and it's super dangerous. Jiggle Billy actually did not even get to go into that fight, and we see them initiate on Jiggle right now. Jiggle going to be caught. He actually BKB there, so the Ice Blast didn't work. However, the damage in the BKB just doesn't matter nearly that much. And now it's going to be Pandago's turn as Bulba just sidesteps that Ice Path, hex, and dunked on as Bulba makes it a double kill. And Liquid looking like they're ready to close this one out. What could be the waning moments of E-Hug in this tournament. If they're on, they're hoping for a miracle. Otherwise, they're going to be going out in fourth place. Yeah, and Jigglebilly actually picked up a Mask of Madness there to just try to make up for the damage that they're lacking. But Liquid just overall just playing fantastic. Yep. And this is Radiant's going to be one of attack. two remaining out of tier towers Radiant's gone. Tower has fallen. They are going to play it safe, though. They're really just going to go for all these tier outer towers and then work up, worry about breaking the base when they have the roster wards back up. Yep. No reason. There, there, there's no reason for them to feel rushed whatsoever. No, definitely not. I mean, they have this Luna with tremendous farm, and the late game actually just benefits Liquid more and more because they do have so much lockdown. And, and as well as all of that, they do have an AA with an Ag super early. And we actually see Bulba pick up a Maelstrom yep. on this axe. Hell, a TC's not, like, basically has his Manta done in about 500 gold. So after taking this tower down, they, uh, yeah, that's oh, and Cakes on. grabs an illusion there. Oh, Cakes grabbing the illusion, MSS following it up, and, and GG's <laughs> come out from that right there. Yep, oh, GG called. So Team Liquid, they got pushed a bit in game one. E-Hug came into the tournament, the underdogs, and even though they showed us a few moments of brilliance from time to time, and was that a fake GG? Right. And there we go. <laughs> Even though Eog managed to show us a few moments of brilliance throughout their run in the tournament, it does end with them going over as they fall to Team Liquid here in our first best of three. Oh, the two Liquid will advance through our lower bracket. We'll be meeting the loser of our next match coming up just a few moments from now. EG and Cloud9 set the square off, but. You know, even though E-Hug, again, they came in the underdogs, they didn't, they weren't able to get a win, I still feel like there's a lot of promise in this there's squad. There's definitely a lot of potential on that team. You could see it from that last, from the last game before this one. They did do a great job of avoiding the ganks and everything from Liquid, but overall, they do have some stuff they need to work on. They do need to play more as a team, and then I can definitely see this team having some success, for sure. Yeah, well, and you know, you got to remember, this is a team that has a situation a lot of players would kill for. They have a team house. They have the chance to live and play Dota, and they have a sponsor who seems to be very, very supportive. You know, we met, um, uh, you know, meeting the guys. They're all great guys, yep. and they seem to have a lot of natural chemistry with each other. That often bodes so well for a team at the early stage of their development. But, yeah, Team Liquid able to uh, able to just take control of this match early. Nine and one on Bulba's axe, and you know, he was kind of getting bullied around in that mid, in that uh, mid roll uh, early on, but don't think he had any problem transitioning down the stretch. Yeah, for sure. MSS played a little bit weird that game, but overall he did have a great game, but Liquid, uh, Bulba actually just had a spectacular game after this laning phase. He got his blink dagger relatively early. They had some stacks up from the jungle. Even though he left the mid lane, he did end up not even letting that tower die early at all. And E-Hug just could not pressure these towers yep. the way they wanted to. They did get the Dragon Form early, uh, Dragon Form extremely early because of this early Midas, but they couldn't pressure this tower because of the great rotation by the Liquid supports. Well, we're just about ready to throw it back out to the stage, and I'll be there with uh, the winning captain. But of course, remember our next best of three coming up mere moments from now. That'll be EG and Cloud9 squaring off in our upper bracket finals. Winner of that advances to the grand finals to be held tomorrow. Loser, of course, will meet the winner of this series, which was Team Liquid. Throwing it back out to Anna now. You're tuned in to the Monster Invitation. TC, it looks like I'm seeing a lot of smiles, maybe even some sighs of relief. How's Team Liquid feeling right now? Uh, we feel great. We're in the money right now. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to keep this momentum going and uh, tomorrow. Yeah, this momentum, uh, you know, breaking through here, how much does that help you guys going into the next few matches? It definitely helps a lot. We had a bit of a fun pick in the last game, so that helps to boost confidence a bit. Uh, E-Hug mentioned that they were going to have a bit of a surprise for you in that last match. Were you surprised or were you prepared for everything they threw at you? Uh, we were a bit surprised by the Wraith King, uh, especially when he 
had a refresher. We weren't really expecting that. He was pretty hard to kill. He had so many lives. But you overcame it just fine, and now you're moving forward. Let's revisit also your stand-in. Um, Koikva's not here with you. You've got MSS. The casters were mentioning how valuable he's been in some of these situations. How's your team synergy, and how's he fitting in? Uh, he's fitting in great. He plays a different style, but we can adapt to it pretty well. Great. Well, you guys are probably going to need to get some rest, prepare. What do you guys do to keep yourselves in with that momentum overnight and into tomorrow? Uh, just keep talking to each other, just have fun. Great. All right. Well, I'll let you guys get to that. Thanks again. Congratulations. Let's hear it again for Team Liquid. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with more Dota 2.